How great is our God. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to his name. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our online service. We give God the praise and the thanks that he has done already so much for us. Before we go into the word, shall we please bow our head in prayer? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am nothing, Father, by empty pleasure. But if I find favor in your sight, my Lord, I plead, please use this clay to channel your word to us. For we are waiting to hear from you as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. This morning, I am going to speak to you on the title, Prepare. Have you ever been in a situation where you find yourself so frustrated because the situation was so difficult or very challenging? You prayed, you fasted, you cried unto the Lord and there was no answer, so you thought. But maybe 10 years or 15 years later, you come back to realize that the same situation the Lord was allowing you to go through. He is using that to shape you to face a situation where you had no idea what care in life. So today, as I was giving this assignment to preach from the book of Luke chapter 4, which was our second scripture reading, Everyone knows about these uh, scriptures and it's pertaining to the temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness. So I'm asking myself, what does that have to do with Mother's Day? And I would like to take a moment to say Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, spiritual mothers, biological mothers, fathers who have been mothers and aunties and uncles and also all the grandmothers out there. I just want to wish you a special Happy Mother's Day. And so when you look at this title, you will be kind of confused like I was when I began, I began to study the scriptures. But there is an African proverb that says, Tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it now. And so I want us to look back on Jesus' life to see how he was prepared to face the wilderness experience that he went through. In the book of Luke chapter number two, we heard that every year, year by year, the mother and the father would take him to Jerusalem and they will take him to celebrate the Passover festival and at one point when he was going they were going home the parents realized Jesus was nowhere to be found so they took a three days journey back to Jerusalem only to find the young Jesus sitting down in the temple he was sitting down in the temple not being idle but he was asking questions listening Questions he was asking was not pertaining to anything, but pertaining to the scriptures. And he made it clear to his parents that he has to be in his father's house. But yet he went back with his parents and the word said he was obedient to them. Let's pause for a minute. 
because we will see three stages in Jesus' life before he started his ministry. The first one that we can see here is obedient. The word said he was subjected to his parents. He was obedient to them. And I believe that the spirit of obedience that he showed allowed Joseph, the earthly father, not to hold back anything from this young man. But we teach him a Jewish culture and his roots, his religious beliefs, and it will prepare him even for life itself. Because one scripture described that Jesus described that Jesus was a carpenter. Others say he was a carpenter's son. You see, the spirit of obedience lead us into so many good areas in our future lives. The next thing we will see is the next stage of Jesus' life. Keep your eyes in the temple. The first one I said is his childhood. He was in the temple and it was about the scriptures. The second phase, we do not hear too much, but the next thing we will hear is about his baptism. He has now grown to be a young man, 830, and he was making decisions for his life. His decision making will also depend on all the things that he has learned. He has learned from the religious be believers, those scholars, those stripes and Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he has found from them that yes, they know the scriptures, but their message is not about the kingdom. Their core beliefs and their hearts are not towards what God wants for the whole world. And so he will march on to John where he was baptizing. And John will try to deter him not to be baptized. Why would John do that? And I'm so glad that you are asking that question. Well, John realized that he's not even worthy. He's not worthy to even lace his shoes, let alone to baptize him. But Jesus refused and, and, and insists that he allowed them to do this. So he said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this. Let it be so now, not tomorrow. not next week but now because there's time for everything he has realized that his time has come and he's moving towards his destiny and he said it is proper for us to do this it's proper for us here the word us also we can see that during creation when the lord said let us create man in our own image. Jesus will declare, whether silently or loudly, that it is good for us to work together. He, although John is not qualified, like he, John is, is, is saying, but Jesus is I, I, I acknowledging that John has been sent by God. He has assignment. He is the trailblazer for him. And so he sub subjected himself to do what God has called him to do. And he worked with him, which signal to us the power of unity. You see, where there's division, nothing can be done. But where there is unity, great works will be established. So today, my question again to you, in this second phase, when was the last time you acknowledge yourself that yet 
you have more than somebody that you have been put to work with. But yet, you acknowledge the person that he has been called by God to be your head or to lead. And so you will humble yourself enough and to work with that person for the common good of the kingdom of God. Baptism is a sign of identity. Jesus is not just uniting with John to do that and just to go. But he will leave that for us. That when we come to the Lord and we hear the scriptures and it's preached to us, we will be baptized after we have believed in Jesus. You see, when you go down, you are saying you're going down with every sin that you have. And when you come out, you're coming out with a new man, as a new man, ready to go on to work for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus will do that. And he went down into the water. He went down not because he's a sinner. He went down because he carried, he's carrying the sins of the world. He has already been polluted by the the culture he lives in, he has, he has seen all, and he, all those things already is rubbed on him. He went down and left everything there, and he left a sign for me and you. Maybe you are here. Maybe you're hearing my voice, and you say, Minister Tina, I have not been baptized, or I have not believed in the word of God. My question to you is, what are you waiting for? Tomorrow will not be there for you. If you hear his voice today, do not harden your heart. We see the pandemic and the devastation. So many people who passed away, they did not get up today and say, I am going to contract the disease and die tomorrow. Your life is not in your hands, my brother and my sister. So by the time we finish this message, I, I plead with you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, give your heart to him. Look for a church, a Bible-believing church, and go out there and get baptized and get busy for the one who created you. So back to Jesus and John. After the baptism, the word of God says, when he was coming out from the Jordan River, all of a sudden the heavens opened and a dove descended from heaven upon him and the voice of the Father was heard. The heavens opened declaring that here I am introducing my son to the world. I am introducing him to be the one who is going to be the sacrificial lamb. The lamb that he has, he has observed being sacrificed year after year in Jerusalem. Here is the one who is coming to take away the sins of the world. The Holy Spirit coming upon him is a sign that our ministry had to be done not on our strength nor by our power as the word of God say, but by the spirit of the living God. He need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit because the Father and the Son and the Spirit do work together. And the Holy Spirit descended to announce that, that he is with him, he is going with him. Then the Father voice came. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I love the King James Version. This is my beloved son in where I am well placed. Jesus has not even started his ministry. So why will God say I am well placed? You see, Jesus has given himself to, he, he has given himself to his earthly fathers, uh, parents. And he has, he has spoken the heavenly language. 
The language in heaven is obedient. And Jesus has fulfilled that. He has uh, uh, submitted himself to the servant that was seen to be a trailblazer, John the Baptist. He has done that. And the father is saying, I am well pleased. Is the father well pleased with you? In this pandemic, is the father well pleased with you? With the way you use your time. With the way you use your mind, with the way the things that you think about, is the Father pleased with you? In the entire life of yours that has been given to you, is the Father pleased with your life? You see in the book of Acts, the word declared that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. When the Lord is well pleased with you, he will anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with power. For the kingdom of God is not about food. The kingdom of God is about souls. And we are here to serve. So the father declared, he announced clearly to the world that he is very pleased with his son. The Lord is gracious to us. In this pandemic, there are so many people who are looking to so many areas that are not necessary because we are not focused. This great time has been given to all of us. And it's not what is happening in the times that we are in, but it's what you do in this circulation, in this place called isolation. Jesus has fulfilled the two steps of his life. And now he will be moved into the next phase and this is where we go into the book of Luke chapter number four the word says that when he was coming out of the he was going into the wilderness he was full of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the one that led him into the wilderness he did not go in there by himself you see this is the time where he is going to let go. He is going to be separated from everyone. He was isolated from everyone. He was there all by himself, but with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. And so before he stepped in to go and face the enemy, he was literally saturated with the power of the Holy Spirit. The word said, Fool, when was the last time you were baptized or refilled with the Holy Spirit again? Because if you are going to take a journey, when you know the journey is long, you don't fill your tank half. You put full gas, full tank into your car. Because you know that you, your gas will finish in the middle of the, your journey if you don't fill your tank. This journey we are taking is a marathon, it's not a spring. And we need to be fed, we need to be filled, fully saturated. Like how when you take a sponge and you put a sponge into oil or water and it's all soaked. That's how we are supposed to be soaked by the Holy Spirit. So he can lead us. Maybe this pandemic has been a wilderness for you. And you feel like you are failing. My brother and said, my sisters, I said, turn back to the Holy Spirit to be filled, to be soaked by him. And you will feel wherever he leads you you will not fail and so when he was led by the holy spirit the tempter came and he will come in with everything that he think he had so he can tempt the lord jesus christ he said to him if you are the son of god if you are the son of god he is not doubting 
who Jesus is. He is challenging his authority and his identity. If you are son of God, change this stone, turn this stone into bread. He know that Jesus is vulnerable because the Bible says he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights. We saw Moses and Elijah. They all did the same. But guess what? Jesus is not going to listen to the enemy because his, his allegiance is not to Satan. He is obedient to his earthly father and now he is going to obey to do what he was called to do, his, his divine father. Because this is the beginning of his ministry. And so Jesus did not pull any trick. He did not do any magic. What did he do? He pulled out the sword, the word of God. The word of God is powerful. It is so sharp and it's powerful than any two-edged sword. The word says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against principalities and powers. And so when the enemy came, he used the word because the word says the weapons that we have, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds. So he pulled that sword and he said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone. What do you have in your arsenal? Jesus did not learn when he got there. He learned he was prepared during his childhood. I love the Nigerian uh, proverb. I think it goes to something like this, that you do not prepare the day that you are living. You prepare way ahead. So Jesus was prepared. Are you prepared? And if you are not, how are you preparing? Because you see, Satan do not just come to tempt you once and go. The second temptation will show up. He is persistent. He does not want to give up because he wants to make sure that we are going to give in to his orders. And so he came back again and it will show the things of the world. We know what that second temptation was. Material things. And Jesus did not buy into that either. Satan is persistent. He is going to choke into it till you cave in. And so when he showed him all the world, he said, everything, all this splendor has been given to me. If you will only bow down. If you only bow down and what? Worship me. So in this, your lifetime, where has Satan get you? Where has he get, got you in these things that he's using to trap people? Have you fallen trap into the things of the world? That they have become idols. Because hear what he said, you will worship me. We worship idols. When they become our God, all we think is about them, the money, the prestige. But the Lord will let him know that it's only God that we have to serve. It's only God that he had to serve. And it's the same thing. It's only God that you have to serve and I have to serve. Jesus was not depending on himself. Is letting Satan know that he's fully dependent upon God. For he has a mission here. What is your mission? And how well are you preparing? I will caution us here because you see some of the things that the enemy will come to you with. They look so trivial. But they are like crazy glue. When it get hold of you, it just like glue your life so down, and you will ever regret it. That even you try, you even try to do that. 
because he will try to take it off your life and you are stuck with it. Satan did not live there. He came back again and he was telling the Lord Jesus if he would throw himself down from way up at the top of the, of the temple because the Lord has said that he will send his angels to hold him that he will not even dash his feet. He was quoting against a stone. He was quoting Psalm 91, but in a wrong context. You see, one of the things that we, this generation we are falling into is, is to have the gospel twisted, get the gospel to us in a wrong context, and we believe it. But the one behind it is no one but Satan. Jesus will not buy into it either. And he will let him know that he should not taint his God. This is the end of his three temptations. In this wilderness experience, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is giving us a clear picture that for each and every one of us who have we call ourselves Christians, there will be a time of facing a wilderness. But if you are waiting for the storm to start before you prepare, your house will collapse. Your house will be shattered. The Bible is telling us that we need to be prepared. So let's come back as mothers. You see, mothers are the ones that prepares us most for life. The fathers are out there working and the mothers are preparing us for life. I take my heart out for all the mothers and I honor you for the good work you are doing for all the children. I am a product of one. So if you are putting your all Maybe you are a mother who you have your own challenges or you don't get the education that you wish you could get, but you sacrifice everything. I just want to honor you. That is well done. You have done your job because some of the children will come out to be like Jesus, to be obedient to the kingdom of God. And now to the church. Let us prepare on few things. Maybe the house you grew up in, you do not have those things I talk about. But in this pandemic, while we are isolated, use that as a time of separating yourself to everything. Because you see, when the world, the enemy comes and he finds the things in you, he will come after you. The word of God says, when the enemy came to the Lord, he find nothing in him. Because he was in the wilderness, he left everything and he was focused. During this pandemic isolation, use that to be still in the presence of God. If you don't have the language of heaven, to be obedient to nobody, let alone to God, ask God to help you. If you don't have the spirit of unity, all you do is to tear people apart, tear things apart that is being built. Ask the Lord. Because in the book of Zephaniah, he said, then I will put, I will purify the lips of the people. He's talking about the remnant. If you so survive, you are part of the remnant. That all of them may call on the name of the Lord. Call upon Yahweh and serve him shoulder to shoulder. Unity. That's what the Lord wants from us. So ask the Lord to help you to prepare. Is it does not want us to be premature, leaving our destinies behind. When we cave into the enemy, that is exactly what we do. So ask the Lord that you will not give up your assignment prematurely because you gave in into the enemy. Ask the Lord to give you humility. You see, if you don't have humility, you are bought your assignment prematurely. And when the time comes, you will not be able to fulfill the fullness of what you are called to do. Jesus knows that there will be a time where he will use that same bread. He will multiply a few loaves of bread 
and feed 5,000. And so when he did not answer to the enemy, he fulfilled that at the right time when the Lord is leading him to do so. He would know that at the right time when he's hung up on the tree, he's going to scream and the, and the, and the veil will be torn in that temple. So he did not commit that suicide. The enemy want him to. Do not allow the enemy to take your life prematurely. Just focus. Because you have something peculiar for the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, the Lord loves us so much that he has given us everything pertaining to our calling. Let's get prepared because after this tsunami of death, there's a wave of his children that will be coming to the church. He needs compassionate hearts. He needs servant hearts. He needs people with spirit of unity. He needs people who will humble themselves. There are people who are coming who have faced multiple deaths in their family. They are grieving. As the Lord prepare you as a sanctuary. So when they come, we as a church will be so equipped. And not laying the burden on the pastor alone, but all of us. I mean, all of us, we have a, a vital role to play so that the kingdom and those that we are called to serve will know that we are here for the sake of the Lord. May the days that are ahead of us, may we be under the shield of him and may his presence and his Holy Spirit be with us. Amen.